As many viewers on this channel know, Louisiana Senator John Kennedy often is cause for viral moments and highly viewed videos. The often humorous Republican, who sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee, has boasted multiple moments that have exceeded half a million views on this channel. Here are the top five most viewed John Kennedy moments on Forbes Breaking News for 2022. And fun fact, our very first video on this channel featured the junior senator of the Bayou State. Senator Kennedy, I went a little over, and you're welcome to do the same if you wish. Thank you, my friend. Uh, congratulations to all of you. I hope to be able to ask each of you some questions, but I do want to stay within my, uh, my time limit. Let's start with Ms. Clark. Um, <clears throat> you've been nominated by President Biden, served on the federal district court, which means, of course, that uh, the Court of Appeal is going to review all of your decisions. Um, what is the, the appellate standard of review for um, question of fact? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. Um, I have not uh, worked on a, an appeal in my, my 14 years of experience. Um, I believe that um, uh, it is reviewed um, based on abuse of discretion would be this. No, it's uh, clear error. Clear error. As the federal district court judge, you're going to have a lot of, of discretion uh, on determining facts. How about if somebody appeals one of your decision and they say you made a mistake on the law? What's the appellate standard of re review? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. Again, You're as I, I, I mentioned, um, I have not uh, worked on appeals. If a question like that came um, uh, before me, um, I would thoroughly research the law. I understand that there's de novo review, abuse of discretion, and clear error are the, are the different um, standards. Okay, but you don't, you don't know today the answer. Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. It would, it would be welcome. something that I would need to research further. Okay. Um, how, how about a mixed question of, of fact and law? What's the standard of review on that? Thank you for the question, Senator. You're Again, um, uh, my understanding are that the different levels of review are de novo, um, abuse of discretion, and clear error. Well, but that's a question of law and fact is, gonna, is different. Thank you for the question, Senator. You're Again, in my, in my 14 years of experience, that is not an issue um, uh, that has confronted me. Okay. All right. Well, you, you're, you're, you've been nominated for the Southern District, I think. Is that right? That is correct. So you'll see a lot of securities cases? Yes. Okay. Tell me what uh, SEC Rule 10b-5 is. Uh, that's a, a rule that deals with fraud. Um, I have... Uh, uh, not litigated a securities uh, matter. Uh, if I were um, uh, to confront one, I would thoroughly research Second Circuit and Supreme Court precedent, and I would um, apply the law to the facts. Ms. Clark, you've been nominated to the Southern District of New York. It's where most of our securities cases are litigated. And rule, SEC Rule 10b-5 is about as basic as you can get. You want to take another crack at that and tell me what Rule 10b-5 does? Uh, thank you again for the question, Senator. I, I regularly confront uh, new issues of law in, in my practice, and when I do, I thoroughly research the I, issue. I know you're going to thoroughly research it, but are you telling me today you don't know what Rule 10b-5 is? I only have that basic understanding. Okay. All right. Um, Sir Kennedy. I think, I think Senator Hoven answered your question, but I, what I want to do is encourage you to look at this, this problem longer term and from 35,000 feet. Name two countries who don't give a damn about reducing CO2 emissions. Russia and China. Name other people and parts of the world that do care about reducing CO2 emissions. The West, Europe, the United States of America, John Kennedy. I care. 
the reduction of CO2 emissions is an important policy. So is national security. And what Russia and, 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 and uh, China have done here, they have taken advantage of, of the, the effort to reduce CO2 emissions, which to the Biden administration means a frontal assault on oil and gas. It's so clear what's happening. And they're working together. This isn't just about Ukraine. It's about the East China Sea and the South China Sea and Taiwan and Africa. It's so clear. And the president needs to hit this head on. How are we going to win this? How are we going to make Putin a pariah? How are we going to kick him out of the international community, kick him out of the international marketplace if you don't attack his oil and gas? And it's not going away, folks. And at point two, I need you to, to ask my friend Secretary Yellen a question. We just gave Putin $18 billion in special drawing rights. Secretary Yellen said, oh, we've got to issue these special drawing rights. Make the IMF do it, these gift cards. She didn't bother to explain. And why? To help the poor countries buy vaccines. She didn't bother to explain that most of these gift cards, these special drawing rights, are going to the wealthiest countries. The small countries get the little end of nothing. And she just handed Vladimir Putin $18 billion. And we didn't hear a word from her. And we didn't hear a word from the IMF. You couldn't have found them. On, with, with a search party. You couldn't have found them with Google. They just turned the money over. I, I'd be a little curious about that. I'll talk to you long. I'm sorry, Jim. No. Uh, here's what we're going to I can talk as long as Cruz, though. I just learned I'm not. <laughs> on that. Thank you both. Thank you, Senator Thank Tester. You. Senator Kennedy from Louisiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Governor, Director. Congratulations on your nomination. Uh, Governor, I, I realize at the Federal Reserve that you have a, a big staff that advises you on inflation. And based on their track record, my guess is they also advised people to buy condos in Las Vegas in 2007. But you don't have to accept their, their advice. So with respect to your predictions on inflation, how did you get it so wrong? Well, uh, Senator, thank you. Could you move closer to the mic for me? Yes, of course. Thank you for your question, Senator. You're welcome. So I think, you know, nobody got the pandemic right. Um, the pandemic is unprecedented. We've yeah, but I'm asking you about inflation. Yeah, so um, I think as, as uh, forecasters, private forecasters, um, certainly uh, the forecasters, um, the SEP, uh, the, the whole committee, um, we uh, thought uh, that perhaps uh, we would see a more rapid resolution of the pandemic and the supply-demand mismatches, so in particular you, you, in cars. Excuse me for interrupting, but, but I don't have much time. Do you think, you, are you saying that inflation was caused by the pandemic? So we certainly have seen um, the uh, perpetuation, for instance, of the Delta variant uh, leading to Yes, yes ma'am, but are you saying that the inflation is caused by the pandemic? I certainly think the supply-demand imbalances that have been the biggest contributors um, to the very high inflation we've seen are directly attributable to supply chain issues, distortions in demand. Well, well but here's what troubles me about that. Um, I'll, ag I'll agree that inflation is spreading. But I don't see people going around coughing inflation on each other. Uh, I, I think, uh, and I understand supply chains matter, but so does the demand side. And so does too much money chasing too few goods. And, and uh, I, I don't think, and I don't think any fair-minded person thinks that inflation is solely the result of the pandemic. Let me, let me move on. 
Do you think that uh, federal regulatory authorities should use their considerable power, not just the Federal Reserve, but federal regulatory authorities, do you think they should use their considerable power to discourage private banks from lending money to oil and gas companies? No. Ma'am? No. Okay. Do you think that uh, those federal regulatory authorities should use their power to discourage private banks from lending money to gun manufacturers and dealers? It's not our job. We don't tell banks uh, what sectors to lend to. We just ask them to risk manage, and we make okay. sure they have good processes. In well, place. I, I agree with you, and I thank you for that. Will you issue a statement to that effect if you're confirmed? Well, I certainly uh, have made that statement. We'll continue to, to make yes, that Yes, ma'am. Would you issue a separate statement saying, I want to make it clear to, for what it's worth to all of my colleagues in government, I don't think that you should use your power to, to discourage private banks from lending money to oil and gas companies and, uh, and, and to gun manufacturers. Well, will you tell, do that? Well, I won't tell other regulators what to do, but I, I will be happy to talk about what we do at the, at the Federal Reserve, what our... What our statutory authorities require us to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to follow up with you on that. Okay. Senator. Uh, I take that as a yes. And, and I'm looking forward to that statement. Um, director, gosh, I, this, is, this is America's debt. I'm not going to have time to ask you about it because I want to ask Director Thompson a quick question. I mean, yes, Director Thompson. Direct, Madam Director, are you familiar with President Biden's uh, risk rating 2.0 uh, pricing scheme for the National Flood Insurance Program? Uh, sir, I don't, I'm not familiar with the details of that program. Well, I need you to take a look at it. You talk about affordability. President Biden is about to make housing for at least 500, 5 million Americans unaffordable by raising their flood insurance from $1,000 a year to five and $6,000 a year, and you're going to have a problem. Um, real quickly, Madam Governor, do you think we've got four big banks? They have market share between 30% and 50%. In the greatest economy in all of human history, they're not really banks, they're countries. Do you think power, economic power, is too concentrated in those four banks? Well, I certainly think that from a financial stability point of view, uh, when you have very, very large institutions that are systemic, uh, you need to have very, very big capital buffers and liquidity buffers and risk management because it would be very, very difficult to resolve those banks in a moment of financial stress. Okay. My, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've been thank very, you, very Kennedy. kind with your time. My office will work with you on that statement about oil and gas and gun manufacturers. Thank you, Senator. Okay. Senator Warner from Virginia is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to, first of all, take a moment. Um, I know normally in the Banking Committee we don't introduce our witnesses, but I want to Let me ask Ms. Franklin and Ms. Williams a question. Your jurisdiction, let me be sure I get the title correct. Uh, Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board. I got that right? Your jurisdiction is pretty broad, isn't it? So the jurisdiction is broad in some ways in that uh, the board has oversight over counterintelligence programs across the intelligence community uh, with regard to privacy and civil liberties, but it's focused on counterintelligence with, or it's focused on counterterrorism, not all privacy and civil liberties issues. Right, right. Okay. I, I think this is a very important board, but I'm sitting here thinking We spent three, four years with some, some, not all, I'm going to emphasize that, but some, not all members of our 
FBI and our Department of Justice selling the Steele dossier. Does that embarrass you? So, so, Senator, I think, um, you know, there have been three inspector general reports with regards to some of the things that went on. And um, I think that the recommendations in them are, are a good recommendation. Well, let me ask you this, do you, Ms. Wayne. Do you think the Steele dossier is true? Uh, well, Senator, I, I have no basis to believe uh, it's true or either way. I, I I you don't, don't have an opinion. I mean, I I don't I don't have any factual basis to know whether or not I I do what I from what I've read. It sounds like there's some concerns with the way it was procured. So you don't. You, I'm, I don't understand. Yeah. Do you believe it's true or not true? So I, I haven't read the Steele dossier, but from from the news reports, it sounds like there may be falsehoods in it. But again, I don't have personal okay. knowledge of it. Um, Ms. Franklin, do you know if it, do you have an opinion on whether it's true or not true? I also have not had access to read the dossier, but I can say that I share your concern. Yeah, but I, I, I know if it's true. I'm gonna ask, I, I want to understand where you're coming from. Do you believe it's true or not true? I believe that uh, the Inspector General of the Justice Department found. Uh, significant problems in three reports, including 17 significant errors or omissions in right. the FISA applications regarding so Carter you Page. It's not true. I believe that the Inspector General found these errors and omissions, which are highly concerning. Do you agree with the Inspector General? I I find the re Inspector General's report very convincing. Yes. Okay. So you don't believe the Steele dossier is true? I. Why is it so hard for you? Oh, tell me what you think here. That's pretty basic. I would turn to the errors and omissions that the Inspector General did point to, which were significant. And I uh, know that Congress has attempted to take steps to address those. Well, here's what I'm getting at. I mean, I can tell you all the one answer, and I really, really regret that. I mean, I, this, this to me is, it's not political. It was this, these allegations that turned out not to be true. It doesn't matter who they were about, but the, the, some members of our federal government put the full force and weight of the power of the office behind this dossier. And it didn't matter whether who, who they were, and I, I can't believe you can't agree with me that it's not true. I mean, the, the, there have been three inspectors' general reports. Where, where, where was your agency? Did anybody at your agency stand up and say, wait a minute, before we make all these allegations on the basis of the Steele dossier, shouldn't we check whether they're true? I mean, FBI Director Comey sold this thing for five years. James Clapper was prepared to make a public statement that, that we, we, we're not sure if the, if the dossier is accurate, and, and uh, Director Comey called him and said, no, don't say that. Where were you guys at the board? You're supposed to protect civil liberties. You're supposed to protect privacy. Does it matter whose privacy and civil, civil, civil liberties are being infringed? Either one. So, Senator, I wasn't at the board. I haven't been at the board yet, but I agree with you that that is exactly the role of the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board, right? Thank to you. Ensure, to ensure that the privacy and civil liberties are, of Americans are taken into account and to make sure that our intelligence agencies are being completely forthright and truthful well, with well, the decision Thank makers. you for that. Well, you were there, Ms. Franklin, right? You no, weren't there? No, no Senator. Okay, I, well, I when, you, when you both get there, I, I wish you would... Talk to your colleagues over there. They ought to hide their heads on a bag. They're in charge of protecting American civil liberties and privacy, and it doesn't matter who you are. And they sat there sucking on their teeth like a bump on a log and never said a word. I'm done. Thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, and I like your haircut. Thank <laughs>
<laughs> haven't had one in a while. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. And uh, uh, I'd just like to say to those who are new to this uh, environment that the uh, many bar exam that Senator Kennedy gives to many of these uh, witnesses reminds me of my anxiety in law school where I sat in the last row and slumped down to the point where I have curvature of the spine in the hopes that I wouldn't be called on to answer uh, what 15B is or anything like that. But uh, nevertheless, always entertaining and always well presented. The second uh, objection made by the senator relates to your lack of candor. On this side of the table, we're a different branch of government than what you're aspiring to, by and large. Uh, and we have opinions on everything and express them willingly, particularly if it's televised. And uh, very seldom hold back. We know that on the judicial side, the opposite is true. You don't want to put yourself on the record in a situation that may disqualify you from a case and the frustration Senator Kennedy feels with some of your lack of candor we felt on the Democratic side with any other administration. It, it is by nature a reflection on the uh, branches of government being a little different in philosophical approach, to say the least. So before I adjourn today, I want to thank you for um, uh, cooperation and patience especially to Caroline and Jamie. Are they still back there? Good. Good job, kids. Uh, questions for the record will be due to the nominees by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, January 19th, and the record remains open until that time to submit letters and similar materials. And with that, this hearing is stands adjourned. I'm, uh, I'm John Kennedy. Not that John Kennedy, this John Kennedy. Permit me, if you will, to tell you what I believe. I believe that America was founded by geniuses. But it's being run by idiots. I believe that you can't fix stupid, but you can vote it out. I believe I believe that America, unless we lose it, is the greatest country in all of human history, and the whole world knows it. Let me ask you something. When is the last time you heard of someone trying to sneak into China? <laughs> America is so great. America is so great that people who hate it refuse to leave it. Now listen to me on this one. I believe that Republicans are not perfect. I believe that Republicans are not perfect, but the other side is crazy. <laughs> and, and I also believe in, when, in what we accomplished when Republicans control the House and control the Senate, and President Trump was our president. I want you to think about it just for a minute. In four years, in four years, this is what we did. We cut taxes. We increased wages. We delivered 3.5% unemployment. We, we had the lowest unemployment rate in the history of this wonderful country for Hispanic Americans and African Americans. We created 8 million new jobs pre-COVID. We deregulated the economy. We controlled inflation. We protected life. We secured the border. We secured our streets. We beat back ISIS. We strengthened the military. We stood up to China, Russia, and Iran. And we confirmed 234 conservative federal judges, including three new members of the United States Supreme Court. And by God, we can do it again.
Now, let me say a word about the Biden administration. I say this gently. So far, the Biden administration sucks. <laughs> President Biden has mismanaged COVID, he's mismanaged Congress, he's mismanaged the border, he's mismanaged crime, he's mismanaged foreign policy, and he's mismanaged Afghanistan. He's also, he's also mismanaged inflation. Now, I don't like to brag about the expensive places I've been. But this morning, I went to the gas station. <laughs> oh, my God. Please, dear Lord, don't let President Biden mismanage Russia aggression. What else do I believe? I believe that exercise makes you look better naked. So does alcohol. <laughs> I don't know how that one got in here. It just... <laughs> I believe that no parent, no parent should be required to send their child to a failing school. I believe that no parent, no parent should be required to send their child to a failure factory where violence is common and learning is rare. I believe in the dignity of work. Those who can work should work. Welfare for able-bodied people should be temporary. Welfare should be a bridge, not a parking lot. <laughs> Let me say a word about foreign affairs. That's on our minds today. I believe that weakness invites the wolves. Now, I don't know what this is. If I make it to heaven, I'm going to ask. But there's some people in this world, they're not sick, they're not mixed up, they're not confused. It's not that their mama or daddy didn't love them enough. They're evil. And some of them run countries. And all they understand is strength. We must be armed for peace. I believe that we don't have a gun control problem. We have an idiot control problem. Here's some free advice, friends. If the government ever tells you you, you, you can't own a gun, by two. <laughs> I believe, I believe that if you hate cops just because they're cops, the next time you get in trouble, call them a crackhead. Here's a free tip. Cops will leave you alone if you don't do illegal stuff. Yeah. I believe in life. Yeah. I believe in life. I believe that babies don't choose to die. 
And I believe that we need to defend those babies, those little lives every single day. Every single day. Now listen to me carefully on this one. Hear me out. I believe that America is not perfect, but we are good. Like every other culture in the history of humanity, America caught the disease of slavery, but we beat it back. And we passed civil rights laws in 1866, 1871, 1875, 1960, 1964, 1968, 1990, and 1991, and I'm probably leaving some out. The truth is that most Americans don't think that much about race. They think about character. And they understand that souls have no color. I believe we need an election day, not an election month. I believe you should have to prove you are who you say you are when you vote. <laughs> Duh! I believe that vetting people at the border is not racist. It's prudent. I believe that Arlington National Cemetery. Have you been? If you haven't, go. If you've been, go twice. Go again. I believe that Arlington National Cemetery contains 400,000 reasons why you should stand your ass up for the national anthem. Thank you. USA. Amen. Amen. I believe that cancel culture, which is the military wing of, mo of wokeism, is strangling a free people. You are not free if you can't express yourself. You are not free if you cannot say what you think. I believe that the nauseously woke Washington insider elites, the permanent Washington types, you know who I'm talking about, the vanilla soy extra foam latte crowd <laughs> that lives in the Georgetown condos with the important art on their walls don't respect their ideas. They don't care what we think. And they believe they're better than us. Like I said, folks, you can't fix stupid, but by God, you can vote it out. And finally, I believe our future can be better than our present or our past. I do. I believe our future can be better than our present or our past. I believe that we're only as good as our dreams, that we're only as valuable as our children. 
but the water won't clear up until we get the pigs out of the creek. Help me do that. Help me do that. Help me do that. I love this country. I love this country as much as you do. I think America is worth fighting for. Look, it's not a perfect world, folks. It's not. And I can't promise you that I will win every fight. But I'll promise you this. By God, I will refuse to be beaten. I will never quit on America. I will never quit on America, and I ask you for that same commitment today. One more thing, and then I'm really done. There's one more thing I believe. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I don't hate anybody. I look for grace wherever I can find it. There's always something on God's green earth for us to be thankful for. I believe that love is the answer. I do. I believe that love is the answer. But you ought to own a handgun just in case. Thank you. God bless you.